And the first thing that I want to point out is back here in October 2020, right before the big bull cycle, I put out this video, which is called the best time to buy Bitcoin. And the response from this was really good. So I thought I'd do an updated version and really just dive into the data, looking at the best way to dollar cost average Bitcoin over time. And I built this strategy for TradingView where we can actually back test the results of different approaches. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at three different strategies for dollar cost averaging. And we're gonna start with what I call the 1K a month DCA strategy, which is as simple as it sounds. You buy $1,000 a month of Bitcoin, um, every month. And there's two scenarios that actually have criteria on it. The first one is this, where there's no limit. You're going to DCA buy every month, no matter where price is. If it's at all time highs, or if it's in a bear market, doesn't matter. You're just going to buy, right? That's what this first one means when it says 0% below all time highs. It means you can buy wherever you want. 50% below all time highs means we come in here and we set the criteria to where we're only going to get buy signals when we're 50% or more below all time highs. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep us from buying at all time highs or during bull markets. And that level is represented as this yellow line. So anytime price is below this yellow line, that means we are more than 50% below all time highs, right? So if the all time high is here at, you know, 69K or 70, that means that 50% is going to be around 35K, right? Pretty simple stuff. But what that does is it keeps us to where we're only buying in bear markets or at least, you know, pretty far below all time highs. And then the third thing here is we're still going to do the 50% or more below all time highs. But what we're going to do because we're buying less often, right, where like you can see these blue arrows, we're only buying down here in this yellow zone, we're not buying up here in the bull markets, you're going to be buying less often. So we say, okay, well, what if we double up the size? What if we are more aggressive, and we're buying larger amounts when price is much lower, right? That's actually the smart thing to do, but a lot of people can't do it because they lose confidence in bear markets, right? I've said this probably 5,000 times on my channel is everybody knows buy low, sell high, but not a lot of people actually do it. And why is that? Well, this is a way that can actually give you confidence when you look at the data to be able to do this. So let's look at the data and which one is actually the best. Now, the red here just means less favorable. It's not negative. It just means not the best. The green is the best. So when we look at the results of just buying at any time period and just buying any month, no matter what, um, the results actually aren't that great. And what do we mean by that? What are the results that we want to track? Well, you're obviously looking at the total investment, right? How much capital does that take? And will you run out? Um, and also a, a thing that a lot of Bitcoin maxis don't think about is max drawdowns and the time that you are in a loss, right? This, this actually has a big effect on people mentally where, you know, let's say you buy something at you know, $10,000 and it goes down to 1000 and you have a 90% drawdown or a $9,000 drawdown and you're in that drawdown for a year or two, that hurts. And that's why so many people actually end up selling during bear markets and Bitcoin. This happens in stocks too, because those drawdowns are really painful. And the higher your cost basis is, or the higher your average price is that you bought Bitcoin, the more you're going to feel that pain on the drawdown. So if you're just buying during this time period at any price, you're going to experience a 63% drawdown. And the way that we can see that is if you come in here and you look at your average price, which is this green line, right? So if you're above it, you're in profit, that's your average price. So when price is above your average, you're in profit. When you're below it, that means you're in a drawdown. You can see here in this example, when price broke below this 38K zone during this bear market, you know, it was a huge drawdown, right? Over 60%. And you were in that drawdown for roughly 685 days. 
Think about that. That's a long time period during these times here that you dipped below it. But really the, the meat of this is from this breakdown here, you know, over 540 days consecutively. So that's a big deal. And the other thing that you want to look at is your CAGR or your compound annual growth rate. And what that means is if you look at the total hold time and then you basically smooth out and annualize the returns, what is your average annual gain? It's only 17% and you had a much larger drawdown. So you were underwater for a long period of time and it hurt like hell, and your returns just really aren't that great. Now, the total value or the final value is pretty high, but it's because, again, you put in $47,000. That's 47 months. That's a lot of capital for a big drawdown and not that great of a return, okay? So let's look at a DCA strategy where you're in that 50% zone, or you're, again, you're only really buying in this yellow area or the bear markets. What that's gonna do is it's gonna keep you from buying all-time highs. And if you only buy $1,000 a month, that, that means during this time period, you're only gonna invest 18,000, right? Because it's less months that you have an opportunity to buy but your max drawdown is much less and you spend much less time in that loss, only you know 240-ish days in a drawdown. And that happened right here. If we zoom in, you can see where that occurs. You know, The first time that you buy, you're buying in a bear market. So price is still going against you and it may hurt, but you have less invested during this time period, right? You only have a, a few buys where you're like really deep in the red. And, you know, that's only about 40 to 45%. And as you're buying, when price is coming down, your cost basis, that green line is actually getting lower. So you're getting a lower average buy price. And then you go into the green pretty quickly. As soon as price crosses back over that green line, you're back in profit. So again, the drawdown hurts less and the days and the loss are much less as well, which means less time that you have to be depressed about the fact that you're underwater, right? And then the CAGR, the compound annual growth rate is actually right around 50%. So look at the difference in that, 17% returns versus 50% returns. And again, that's not on average that because Bitcoin's returns, they go up and down a lot every year, right? If we look at this, this is um, Bitcoin's annual returns from 2013 to calendar year 2023. You can see you get these outlier years, especially in the early days, like over 5,000% returns, 1,300% returns, and 2020, 300%, 2023, 155%. But you also get these drawdown years, right, of 60, 70, 80%. So you're never going to have a strategy where there's zero drawdown, right? The markets go up and down, but the idea is you want to get the best average return over time or CAGR with the smallest percentage drawdown. Okay. So again, the third strategy here is you basically double up your size. So you say, Hey, I'm going to be more aggressive in bear markets. And I'm actually going to double. So I'm going to do 2000. So instead of, you know, the 47,000 on just random times, you're going to invest less. So it's 36,000, same drawdown, right? So you're still buying at the same interval. So it's the same return. It's the same day and loss, but the final value is the highest of all three, because again, you bought more aggressively in this bear market. Okay, so uh, this is me coming to you after the fact. I wanted to edit this clip in because I know some of you guys are probably thinking, well, you know, right now we're not in a bear market, so what do I do? What do I do if I wanna buy Bitcoin? And um, the first thing I always say is in general, I don't give financial advice, but this is what I think everybody could do is number one, if you wanna buy some Bitcoin, figure out what is an amount that you could buy that if it went down by 90%, you wouldn't freak out and sell the low. In fact, you would have more capital to add at lower prices. And if it broke out and went to a million dollars tomorrow, that you'd have enough skin in the game 
that you wouldn't have FOMO and you wouldn't feel like you're missing out. And now there's this old saying with traders that your winners are always size too small and your losers are always too big. That's just something that we all run into. But again, if you're looking for a DCA strategy, the data shows that the most profitable time to buy is obviously in bear markets. But there is also another option, which is just get some damn Bitcoin. And then you can also trade. And I'm going to jump to the other clip where I talk about my other strategies right now. And the good news is this isn't the only way to make money in Bitcoin or crypto. In fact, in my crypto portfolio, I have several different capital buckets and multiple strategies for building wealth in this space, right? We talked a little bit about dollar cost averaging today, but in our wealth building community, we actually show a bunch of different strategies like bull market, you know, dip buys and breakouts and scalping volatility and trading momentum in altcoins. And so if you want to be around a group of people that are building life-changing wealth, I'll leave that link in the description. And also in the next video, I'm going to do a comparison of one of my million dollar crypto portfolios compared to a million dollar stock portfolio. And we'll see which one we can grow to 10 million in the quickest and most efficient way possible with the least amount of drawdowns and the best kager. So if you want to see that, like this video up, leave me a comment, let me know what types of strategies and portfolios you want to see me cover. And also, what do you guys think of this DCA strategy? Is this helpful? Does it make sense? Does it maybe add some clarity as to why buying in bear markets and being more aggressive in bear markets is more profitable? Let me know what you think. Like this up, share it with somebody that you think would get value and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.